On August the 15th, 1945, the eight-year-long war of resistance ended with the surrender of Japan, and the destiny of China entered a new stage. As the provisional capital of China, Chongqing then witnessed an important historical milestone, the Chongqing Negotiations. This is Zhongshan 4th Road in Yujong District, which has been praised as one of the most idyllic streets in Chongqing. This area has a rich natural ambiance, mainly thanks to these lush trees that run the entire length. In the autumn of 1945, a special figure who arrived in Chongqing who made waves here, and he showed destiny and the hope of Chinese people, and has been praised by many as a great hero. At 65 Zhongshan 4th Road, there's a quiet courtyard called Guiyuan. In the eyes of tourists who visit Chongqing from afar, this location is not to be missed. <laughs> 76 years ago, the KMT and CPC held a historic meeting here on the future of China's development and construction plans for after victory in the War of Resistance. This became known as the Chongqing Negotiations. After 43 days of negotiations, representatives of the CPC and KMT met on October the 10th, 1945. And in this room right next to me, signed the summary of conversations between the government and CPC representatives, also known as the Double Tenth Agreement. And the negotiator from afar, praised by many, was the CPC leader, Mao Zedong. Chongjian家园和平建国。那么在一九四五年的八月十四日开始，蒋介石是邀请毛泽东能够亲赴重庆共商国事，来重庆之前，那么中共中央内部进行那个的仔细的去讨论，就要在全国人民面前表明我们中
Mao Zedong exhibited his unique courage and foresight, as well as humility, kindness and glamour. He not only positively facilitated peace negotiations between the CPC and KMT, but met extensively with world-renowned figures, conducted work on the United Front at multiple levels, fully embodied the demeanour of a CPC leader and won the hearts and minds of the party.